The forest has been something that's been a part of our people for 60,000 years plus. It's where we get our food source, it's our giver. The country, she provides everything for us. She provides us health, she provides us food, she provides us a place to feel humble. She provides us that positive energy. She provides everything we need to strive as a human being. To have that connection culturally and spiritually, it's something that's never taught to you. It's something that's never given to you. It's something that's a part of you. For me, the land is part of us. This is the one place we have to live. It's for us now. Uh, it's also for our future generations. The forest for me became just a part of who I am. It's always somewhere where I go to reset. And I think it's very important for me and my own mental health actually to connect to the forest. When we understand that we are one and the same with these environments, with the trees, with the lakes, and we understand that we are dependent on those ecosystems that the trees and the waterways create, you understand that if the environment around us isn't well, uh, then we're not going to be well as people. Environment is special. Environment is authentic. It's the land of which we grow, we spiritually connect, and where we learn, we learn from country. So for me, I say Madagurum Duguja, which means strong walk within the spiritual land of our ancestors' pathways. Country is how my Aboriginal ancestors communicate to me. My identity lies within country. To be able to connect with a culture that is so similar, it works so well. The word whānau, like family here, you really feel that when you connect two cultures together and it's, it's overwhelming, it really is. And it's strong and you can see the strength when we meet and I don't think I'll have an experience like this again. The biggest similarity is that respect. We all have that respect for the bush because we know the bush, the, the forest is our provider. You don't disrespect your own home. The bush is somewhat still our home. You've got to show that love and appreciation for it. It's been our provider for thousands and thousands of years. Don't disrespect it. That's the core of our similarities, is how much we actually have love, passion and respect for the bush. And that just intertwines with our cultures. Myrtle Rust is one of the biggest thing I'm so far that I've been taken from this trip is the effect it has, how sick it can make country and make the bush. The bush is our healing place. If it's sick, it has not got power to heal. My take from this whole trip is let's start now. Let's get rid of what's making the bush Mother Earth sick and let's heal it. It's been fantastic. It's really good to see the really strong culture here in New Zealand and a lot of commonality we see in the Indigenous people between Australia and New Zealand. And it's building on a trip we did earlier where many New Zealand contingent came over to Australia. And it's just really good to see those relationships strengthen. Both cultures together have the same struggle, the same fight. And it's been awesome to see and speak with the people from the nations of Australia. And Whanauna Tonga has been a big drive. You know, it started off as a myrtle rust and how we can share knowledge to help combat this kino. But also the main thing is hetangata, hetangata, hetangata. You know, uh, to know each other, open up that pathway for ourselves to go back there, for them to come here. This has been the main drive beside our Myrtle Rust work that we're all trying to combat. The cultural exchange when Māori come to Bachelor country and Gumbangia country and now us coming to this beautiful Māori lands here. The connections, the similarities, the storytelling. What I love so much is how the ancestors inform everything. The ancestors inform how you interact with the land and the water and the stories that have been shared throughout the generations are continued today. 
that respect for the land, the water, the old people. It's beautiful. We have to listen, share the journey, share the experience and share the stories because we are storytellers. We are songline people. So that connection of those beautiful pathways over the waves, over the, the sky country, it's what makes us unique and special and it's so authentic. You feel part of it. Munga you gamandu, Viralumba yin wungan is if you have plenty, you must share. So I feel I'm sharing my culture as well as I'm getting that beautiful cultural exchange with the Māori culture. That's that sharing space and the education that comes with it through our trees, through nature, through the flora, through the fauna, because we take time to listen to country, walk country, breathe country and hear country which is so special to me and I'm so grateful that I had this opportunity to learn. But also it's been something that I will treasure for the rest of my life. Murder rust is gonna be our problem now, but there's other things that are gonna come. So how do we mobilise mana whenua to make a real difference? And we're starting to think that maybe there's a better way of doing this and kaitiaki becoming the actual managers of the Nahiri and how we might as scientists be able to influence that to get the best outcome for the forest, the people in Aotearoa. So whilst at the moment we're focused on middle rust, that's not really the longer term aspiration and vision for Pikeo. From our perspective, we want to be guardians of our own rohe again. That essentially means that we need rangers on the ground that are monitoring, that are supporting restoration efforts. So there's ongoing conversations about how we can reclaim those spaces, but that's really our vision for the future is to have our own people back on the whenua, looking after that whenua, and we start getting better outcomes and greater investment back into those spaces. <laughs>